Hi, I'm Sarah Lo, your host for Malaysian Property Weekly Talk with Prepnext Malaysia. Today, we'll be discussing on the topic, how does public transport system affect on property price? It appears to be a timely topic where a few mega infrastructure projects are launched and the construction of MRD3 is currently underway. Today, I'm thrilled to have Jay Xiao and Mark Tu, who have done much research on this topic, to join me. Hi, hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Thanks for your invitation. Today, we would like to know about your standpoint and your point of view. What's the core relationship between the public transport and also property price? Mark, what do you think? Do you think the property prices will be affected if there is an MRT station? Mm. For me, for my opinion, of course, yes. Because uh, actually a lot of uh, proven, uh, proven results already, like especially our neighborhood country, like Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, uh, all these, uh, especially in Hong Kong, of course, we are not comparing with uh, per square feet price. Uh, Hong Kong is definitely way higher than us. But uh, what they mentioned in Hong Kong actually is one thing called uh, I don't know whether you understand in Cantonese or not. So, means that, the, the house above the LRT station, uh, mm. actually they gain a lot, a lot. So, uh, already proven, uh, M MRT especially is like uh, public transport, will definitely help on uh, property price. But Mark, we are not comparing Apple to Apple. We are in <laughs> different country. Especially in Malaysia, uh, the petrol price is so cheap. Everyone still mm. prefer to drive compared to taking train, right? Mm. So what do you think, Jace? Do yeah, you agree? Yeah, of course, uh, I, I mean, we couldn't really directly compare with this country mm. but I believe what Mark Tu want to say he is trying to giving us a perspective I believe uh, if public transport is really would affected the prices of uh, property especially the demand on the rental mm. I, I mean I understand Malaysia or oh, many of us are still prefer driving because myself I also driving like every day but I do think that there are some part of this population in Malaysia they do really need public transport you know we have a, a part of people we, which we cannot neglect those people that they are working daily commute they, they daily commute to the same place such as the office workers mm. those executive in the multinational com uh, company mm. so I, I believe these people they really need public transport mm. especially as we in, a, in this real estate industry line we also have uh, come across to have a lot of uh, people they're using public transport mm. to travel around with their, uh, their places in, such as their office to their, uh, their home mm. so to me, I think that public transport can help people to save time mm. in terms of less traffic jam. Mm. I, I believe, Sarah, you don't like traffic jam, right? Mac, do you like traffic jam? Of course, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like because myself, uh, we are real estate negotiator. Of course, our daily tasks, we need to drive cars. Mm. Uh, that is something that we cannot uh, So I think avoid. this is a good point. Uh. What you mean is it depends on your work nature. Mm. Whether you need to every day sit at office doing the 9 to 6 job or you are that time that need to keep on travel outside and doing sales work. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. so that's actually define whether you need this public transport or not. Yes, right? and, and that, that this, this part of population, yeah. they do really have many of them which is we don't know because they are commuting mm. well with this uh, MRT station and public mm. transport as well mm. so to me my answer will be uh, coming up in the future it would definitely help uh, uh, property prices increase majority people still prefer to drive because most important is the train is not so convenient the station some they need to walk very long distance to the train station and then need a lot of stops only to reach the workplace yeah, so what do you think on this? Um, okay, for me actually, I agree and disagree. Mm. Because nowadays, uh, actually in Klang Valley, a lot of train stations already. Do you know how many trains we are operating now? Seven. Do you have any idea, James? I don't know actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> actually already have 13 trains are operating wow. now. Yes, 13, 13 trains. 13, 13, 13 lines. 13 lines, lines. Uh, 13 lines uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, 13 lines. So, oh, wow. uh, because uh, for, for the older generations, uh, they will say that uh, maybe the train's not convenient because sometimes for the older time, we still need to drive and park our car somewhere else, yeah. then only take trains ma. Or, you, or you need to interchange a lot ma. then you only can reach your destination. Ma. But now actually not. Uh, Malaysia is working so hard for these infrastructures uh, 
to help to reduce the traffic uh, conditions. Yeah. So uh, for me, I think that now uh, I personally also take few times for for this public transport. I majority also drive lah because in Malaysia, uh, driving to uh, to own a car cost is very cheap. It's not like Hong Kong. Yeah. To buy a public uh, a car park already cost about one million Hong Kong dollar. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for me, what the reason I really like to use about public transport is because of the time. Mm -hmm. I save time, and then uh, during the the time I can do myself things, like I can read a book or I can check all my emails on the trains. But during drive, you cannot do this, right? Yes, yes. I, I believe I quite agree on what Mark Tu said as well. Sarah, I come back to the question that you asked just now. I, I mean, a lot of people, they, they said, oh, the train station is quite far away from it. But from my perspective, our clients, such as the people that come from overseas country, expatriates, they have a lot of comments that they said, today in Malaysian market, actually public transport is really convenient compared to a few years before. Because why yes. we have uh, e-hailing service such as Grab Car Services Today in this uh, situation, mm. with a simple app that you, you tap in down You can find a, uh, a e-hailing services to bring you to the MRT station mm. Not only because of that, you can also save cost by mm. using this service I, I believe that it, it can help a lot on that Because yeah. myself also, sometimes if I have a client that is nearby such as the Bukit Bintang area a uh, condominium there, I will try to take an e-hailing service to the MRT station nearby and then I will take the MRT to that place to complete my deal. So I think for the combination of using them is really, really help a lot. Okay, so what do you both mean is depends on the travelling time, right? So if the travelling time is still within what we can uh, adapt to, mm. you know, then we can consider to take a train or public transport. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Right. That, that is Maybe a uh, twenty yeah. to thirty uh, minutes in a maximum. If let's say, if I need to take one hour, then it doesn't make sense already, right? Yeah, that one yeah, is old story so already. <laughs> yeah. So I think twenty to thirty minutes is a is a uh, time frame that we can accept, lah. Yes. You know? yes. So it means that. Investor, when they want to buy a property, they need to look at which target market they are target on. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, which tenant mm -hmm. or what type of group of customer they are looking on. You know, mm -hmm. the hotspots. Yeah, maybe how many station away from the CBD area, central business district area. You know, all the commercial hub. Yes. Mm, yeah. Yes, yes. Just come back to the point uh, just now. Uh, because of the, uh, you are talking about people are saying the trans the. The station is quite mm. far away from yes. the condominium or the properties. So my point and Mark too is we, we still can use it combined with the e-hailing services. Okay. So it's still really helpful because it will avoid traffic jam, mm. save time and so less stress, mm. right? But I'm still a bit skeptical uh, because some of the condo that I see that's next to train station, the property price doesn't increase eh? huh? mm -hmm. Um yes. I could say yes. Why I say so? Because uh, for now, actually still a lot of empty land for developer to develop. Mm. But let's say uh, property investment actually is a long-term investment. Do you agree? Yes. Like five years minimum or maybe up to 10 years. But you try to imagine, let's say after 10 years, how many empty land still left for next to MRT station? That will be very limited. So on that point of time, uh, you only go into the market, basically you already the, the gap for capital appreciation already less compared to now. Uh, this I, is my point of view. La. I yeah. think uh, now could be the best time because the MRT, the, the whole map, the whole train station is haven't complete yet. Mm. Uh, then you can get cheaper, much cheaper price la, compared to after 10 years later. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I need to add a little bit point here because you know Malaysia, we are a bigger country compared to our neighbour countries such as Singapore and Hong Kong. I mean, a lot of people will might say, oh, if I buy an MRT station, will I really uh, 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 not buy an MRT station? If I buy a property near to close to MRT station, will that property really increase price? Of course, it's not like every single MRT station nearby will have a booming uh, factor. We are talking about booming factor right today. So mm. as an investor or property purchaser, I'm, I believe that you still need to do some research for your own right, Mark Tu. Of course. Cannot of course. be a lazy person now. <laughs> or, or else real estate 
person, salesperson such as us will have no value already, right? Yeah. So we have to go through the whole, uh, whole train station and train line and study about which other station proximity area have a uh, future development mm. or amenities, amenities that can help to boost the demand and the uh, usage mm. for the property investor or the rent, uh, the tenant there, right? Mm. Two? Yes. Do you have any uh, example? Um, okay, uh, beside that, I, I list some example. Uh. Mm. Why not we see like this? Let's say now, very hot area like our CBD KLCC mm. or maybe TRX. We already know that one is a mature township. Uh. Alright, KLCC like Bukit Pintang, all these things. So, who will be the potential tenant for that? Mm. Basically, expatriate. Expatriate, yeah. 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 Mm. Like, uh, uh, expatriate, uh, mm. especially. So, for local Malaysian market, but we don't overlook for this uh, Malaysian market also. Mm. For Malaysian, we we definitely cannot rent there because the renter there for two bedroom easily up up to five thousand per month. Mm. Mm. Uh, so Malaysian cannot afford that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So what what my point is like that. So we have to look further a bit. Maybe uh, three station more away from the CBD or five station or maximum like seven station away from the CBD. That, that development close to MRT definitely will attract a lot of Malaysian but who work in the CBD will rent that because the rental there is so much lower than compared to KLCC. Mm. Maybe a three bedroom only cost you about 2000 per month. Uh, then that is a great investment point. Seems like both of you are is very optimistic on public transport in Malaysia. Eh? Mm, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. We are looking forward for that. So I believe uh, now on on under construction, still we have uh, MRT Line Two, mm. and then uh, LRT Line Three, and also we we hopefully the HSR will be ongoing also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after all this completed, I believe that time is our harvest time for property investor. Yeah, yeah. To add a uh, additional point to Mark Two side, myself, I would think that every country or in in our world, we always push by our next generation. The younger generation is always the one that push the market forward, right? Mm. So I was thinking is, for myself, my observation is nowadays the youngsters themselves they don't really like to drive. I'm not sure about you. Uh, I'm also quite young. Of course, I'm driving now, but I do think the younger generation, the next generation, they don't really like to drive because due to the technology, 5G, right? Nowadays, we are talking about 5G automation driving system, right? You know, people are not going to drive themselves. So what are these affected to our future? People are not going to drive, they will use e-hailing. Sarah, I want to ask you, do, do you use e-hailing service? Uh? Do you use Grab service? You or Grab. Your, uh, your mom, will, will your mom use? Grab service? I think I use more than my mom lah. Yeah, yeah. You see, this is a very, yeah. very, you know, very obvious things to, to go because of the adaption of the technology. Mm. So it, my conclusion to this is, for the future next generation, they will push forward into this more adaption to public services, public transport services, mm. automation services. They want to have relaxed lifestyles. Mm. So with this completion of the MRT and LRT station, mm. additional of these e-hailing services, I do believe the next generation will push forward to more demand on property whereby it's close proximity to MRT station. Do Good do point, Jace. Do you agree? <laughs> of course, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have still have any skeptical doubts or not? <laughs> I think what I can conclude here, one thing is uh, aside from the MRT station, right, we need to look at maybe three to five stations from the commercial hub or the place that have a lot of job opportunities, mm. people will go there and work. I think this is one of the good points because this is the acceptance times that we can accept three to five stations or maximum seven stations, uh, maximum. Mm. You know? And then the second point is aside from the MRT, because when, MRT is just one of the pushing factors, we need to look at the surrounding also. like the uh, development in the surrounding, the future development, whether it will bring the value up of the whole area or not. I think this is very, very crucial. Mm. Yeah. So mm. this is the two uh, point of view that I've, I can actually conclude here today. Mm. Thank you so much, Jace, and thank you so much, Mark. Thank, thank you, you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's sharing session by Mark and Jace. And thank you for watching Malaysian Property Weekly Talk with Propnext Malaysia. I will see you in the next episode. 
stay at home, work at home, and own a home. Hi everyone, I'm Marcus Ting, CEO of PropNext Malaysia. Today, I'm going to share with you how to qualify yourself to be a buyer. Alright, so first of all, of course, the salary. And then after, the bank will take into five considerations. So one is 1B, then 2P, and 2C. B means that you're basic living. Normally, the bank will take up 1005 to 1008 aside. Then thereafter, they will look into either you will have your PTPTN loan, your personal loan, and the 2C is your credit card and also your car loan. So if these five things add up together, assume it's a 3000, means that you still have 2000 quota for your new home loan up to 400,000. 